This is the future. Hello everyone and welcome again to another Warframe guide. In this video I just want to talk about five Warframes that can make steel path levels super easy. You might be surprised why the waifu Warframe Yaruli is on the thumbnail and why am I playing her in the first few minutes of the video. To be honest, I was surprised myself also by how good this Warframe is right now. I was roasted by a, a comment made by one waifu Warframe fanatic probably of why I haven't included her favorite Warframe in the list of unpopular Warframes that are worth playing in the game. At first, the comment did not make any sense since it suggested that melee influence is overpowered when paired with Kuva Nukor while using the Warframe. As far as I know, melee influence is an exclusive melee arcane enhancement that grants melee electricity status procs a 20% chance to grant a time buff that causes melee elemental status effects to spread to enemies within range. Little did I know that Yarali can proxy melee influence while she is riding her Merulina. Um, somehow, her third ability allows melee influence to proxy its status spread effect when you hit enemies with electricity while using any pistol. With a high status chance such as the Cuba Nucor, you can turn Ye really into a vacuum cleaner which clears a room of enemies fast. The best weapon for this is probably the Cuba Nucor as it has an insane status chance that allows you to proxy electricity almost all the time, increasing the chance of melee influence to activate. The Cuba Nucor is also a beam weapon that can chain to multiple enemies, so it pairs well with the melee influence setup and you can spread the status damage to multiple enemies. On top of that, Yarali has an augment called Merolina's Guardian that makes the Warframe tanky and increases the reload speed and fire rate of the Cuban Nucor. Also, the Warframe has a 200% critical chance bonus buff from her passive ability, which is granted to your secondary while you are moving around. This gives Kuva Nucor insane clearing capability with its high critical damage multiplier, and now I know why people are saying that Yarali deserves a spot for the not so popular Warframes that are fun to play with. For the Warframe build, I would go for lots of power strength to make the Merulina ability tanky. Honestly, you don't need anything else but duration if you are using Helminth builds in your Warframe, like the Nourish or Roar setup. Take note that you can't cast Helminth abilities while riding your Merulina, so you need to deactivate the skill, hence the need for more duration, so it will take longer to recast the ability again. We don't need any range for the crowd control or to group enemies with Yarali's abilities as the Cuva Nucor is enough to both proc status like radiation for crowd control or just to kill them instantly with other elements you can put in the gun. But a quick heads up though, don't get too confident and build around a melee influence, yeah really is like it or not. This synergy is not intended and we might see a fix on the upcoming Dante's Unbound update. This will hurt the clear speed of a Cuba Nuke or Yara Lee, but it doesn't mean that the synergy will be dead, the room clearing capability will be minimized, but the synergy will still be good. Honestly, melee influence is not needed, it's just a quality of life improvement for the Warframe. If I were Digital Extremes, I would just let any status by any weapon spread after melee influence procs, but not something I can decide and I will just cross my fingers for improvements to our waifu Warframe in the future. Moving on, I would like to talk about Hildren. We all know that this Warframe is close to unkillable right now with her insane shield gating feature and the huge amount of shield she got, but I just want to talk about the further improvement that the pet rework and the recent Whispers in the Walls update made to Hildren. In most cases, I use a Gloom build for my Hildren, which provides more survivability to the Warframe through the 95% slow of Gloom. This might just be a skill issue, but there are instances in the past where I couldn't maintain my shield Shield, especially when facing multiple threats like the Thrax, Sentient, and uh, Steel Path Acolyte in conjunction survival. There are instances when my shields are drained and I need to run far away from the enemies just to regenerate my shield first. But right now I haven't encountered any problems like this and I'm also thinking of just removing Gloom in the build and playing with the base skills of Hildren. This is because shield regeneration is insane right now for this Warframe. As I've said, it was insane before but it's improved currently with the Topaz Archon Shard that grants shield regeneration on Blast status procs, you can infuse 5 Tau Forge Topaz Archon shards into your Hildren to get that shield regeneration. Then, you can use a Sentinel with the Verglass weapon to proc the blast status. With all the shield mods plus the Topaz Archon shard, and then Hildren's pillage with Arcane Ages and Adaptation in the build, the Warframe can sustain her shield values that sometimes you won't need to cast pillage and you can use her other abilities. I am having no problem at all maintaining a Gloom and Blazing Pillage build while Haven is active and sometimes I can use my fourth ability also just to have fun. Now, 
Now, there's also a trick that you can add to the Warframe to have a budget meal arcane barrier without using an arcane slot. This is by using a Sentinel with Guardian plus the Manifold Bond mod. It's easy to achieve the requirement of Manifold Bond when you're using a status weapon such as the Cuva Nucor or any other weapon that can proxy at least three status before killing enemies. The Guardian mod has 30 second cooldown and this can be lowered easily by Manifold Bond in a mission, allowing you to restore your shield to 100% just like the Arcane Barrier effect. As I have said, you can use and spam the base skills of Hildreen right now if you want, but I just can't put down a Gloom build as it's so satisfying to see enemies almost petrified and all you need to do is strip their defense and kill them with your weapons. The next Warframe I want to talk about is Frost. For returning players, you will love Frost right now as the Warframe is now the best crowd control in the game, not to mention that you can survive now while playing outside of your Frost bubble with an Avalanche build. In addition, the Warframe has insane armor, stripping on his Avalanche ability, and you can pair this with the critical chance augment called Biting Frost. The only thing I don't like about this augment, though, is it only affects targets that are frozen. If only Digital Extremes can improve this augment to those enemies that are affected by cold, then it would be universally good. Also, the Overguard mechanic helps Frost right now with survivability as well as status immunity. These features are already known in the past, and we just know them now as Overguard instead of Frost Armor. But Frost is exceptional right now in terms of defending because cold has an added mechanic wherein it can slow enemies by 90% with 9 stacks. Frost can do this in a wide area with his ability ability and he can even slow Eximus units, Overguard units, or special units like Demolis while using his abilities. At max stack also, you can will gain plus 50% critical damage multiplier which is a great boost for a Biting Frost build. Now I know that the cold slow effect is not only applicable to Frost as you can just mod your weapons with cold and slow down any movement, however, this is great to the overall kit of Frost as now he has insane protection with his bubble and the Overguard mechanic plus the cold slow adds to more survivability for the Warframe, making him one of the best defensive Warframe in the game. And mind you, Frost hasn't received any direct rework and only got to this point with several things changed or added to the game that is not directly involved in the Warframe. Next on my list is Zephyr. This Warframe is amazing in Steel Path levels, in my opinion, as she got all the kit to at least complete almost any Steel Path missions in the game. The Warframe has mobility, but it's the same as Gao's Mac Rush that bonks you in the head if it's your first time using the ability. The first ability can turn into a, uh, a flying skill that leaves all melee units dumb. The best part is that she got a critical chance bonus while in the air with her passive. Also, she got a good grouping ability now with her air burst that makes tornado builds even better. Tornado is a great killing skill as long as you pull enemies near it. However, the ability has slow pulling speed and you can use air burst to group enemies near tornado so you can kill them faster. And of course, she got turbulence which negates every projectile coming from enemy attacks and can be paired with tailwinds flying mechanic to give you superior survivability while in the Air. My favorite setup for Zephyr is probably the combination of the regular Warframe, which means no Helmuth builds paired with the Trumma. You can attack each tornado with the normal fire of Trumma to distribute 100% total damage, including critical hits and status effects from weapons and abilities to all enemies trapped within a tornado. Critical damage dealt to enemies trapped within a tornado is multiplied by 200%, making it easier to kill them and charge up the nuke shot of the Trumna. After that, you can use the nuke shot of the Trumna to one-shot steel path acolytes, use it against enemies in the tornado, or nuke those enemies that are far from your ultimate ability. It's a great synergy, but this is not the only synergy you can use as many weapons pair well with tornado and the critical chance bonus of Zephyr's passive. Lastly, I would like to talk about Saku, the broken Warframe. This is just my opinion, but I find Saku as a, a budget meal Mesa. I know it's not close, but let me give you my reasons. First of all, we all know Mesa can both defend and kill using her Peacemaker ability. While Saku doesn't have that press 4 to win button, their ability synergy with each other to create both defend and kill. The Warframe has got a budget aimbot with their grasp of lock ability. This ability is better with maximum range as it increases the overall damage of the skill with all those stolen guns from enemies. With this ability, all you need to do is press 4 to inflict more deal more damage and use nourish to proc viral on your weapon to deal even more damage. Then they got the lost ability that has the gaze skill which can strip all defenses of enemies and, and of course they can crowd control with the slow effect of their fourth ability. With nourish you can spam your abilities with Zenuric and Arcane Energize, and this allows me the run and gun gameplay for Saku, which is satisfying to use not just on survival missions in the past, but in almost all missions, except Spy of course, which you need something to bypass those lasers so you won't trigger any alarms. But when it comes to killing and defending, Saku is a good Warframe to have in Steel Path levels. They are fun to use, especially with a team, and sometimes I get so satisfied with the fact that I'm doing well in the team, having the highest kill, just by moving around and letting my grasp of lock 
unlock ability Kill the Enemies. Lastly, Saku Prime is expected to be released this year, next to Protea Prime if Digital Extremes will not change the Prime release schedule. I'm so excited about the Prime version of the Broken Warframe, and I get the same vibes as Gal's Prime, wherein I will use and enjoy the Prime version of the Warframe for months in Steel Path levels. So that's all about it. Take note that all the Warframes you see here are my personal favorite in Steel Path, and you might enjoy a different play style. Use this as a guide so you can try out the Warframes I have shown here. I would also like to know your favorite Warframe for Steel Path levels. Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again in my next video. Squad Leader signing off. This is the future.